through feet. That's what we are showing. That is what God wants in the environment. That's what he wants multiplied. He wants the children multiplied, not the trauma. You understand? Praise Jesus. And that's one example. Another example is, um, which we say is abuse. A lot of people have been abused. A lot of women have been abused. A lot, even a lot of men have been abused. And there's people out there that work day and night to make sure that people who have been suffering through abuse have become transformed and come alive and become beautiful again. One of our preachers out of, out of Texas does a good work with that. And what happens, you don't sit there and show off all of the darkness to the media or to the church. You don't go up there in front of a church and just tell some, or in front of an audience and show someone in their destructive state. That's not what you do. You go in there and you put God in that person and you show them the transformation. You show them the new being. You show them a transformed person. And that is the beauty of what God wants to show the environment. We have to get out of being a people that like to celebrate dysfunction and brokenness. That's not what God is trying to celebrate. Yes, God will take someone who is broken. Yes, God will take someone who might have been seen inadequate or, or unqualified for a certain area. But that's not what God's focus area is. You know, when God looked at Moses, God was not focused on Moses' stutter. Moses was focused on his stutter. God was focused on getting millions of people a whole new land, a whole new, you know, city. You see? He wasn't focused on Egypt. God was focused, I'm, I'm going to make a whole new city, and I'm going to be the downtown of that city. <laughs> Praise God. So what he said is that if I'm in your town, that town ain't never going down. <laughs> Praise God. Amen. Praise God. So look at this. Look at this. God says, like the rose of Sharon, I'll take it. like the rose of Sharon, the image of God makes the entire desert beautiful. You may be in a dark place today. You may be in a place where it's dry. You may be in a place where it's deserted, whatsoever. But the mere fact that God has sent you there, he sent you there to transform that place into something beautiful, into something glorious. And that's what we have to understand. Like, I look on social media, I get disturbed sometimes because I am so tired of seeing people put these crazy videos up there of foolishness, of fighting, or of something that's negative or whatsoever. It just drives me nuts. And then the other part about I can't stand is that, like the news media. The news media will sit there, like, for instance, look at Baltimore, right? Baltimore has been a place of rioting. We understand. You know, the Freddie Gray or whatever he was that got killed while in police custody or whatsoever. We look at the Sandra Bland. The situation happened. Yes, that was evil. Oh, that's terrible. That was really terrible. Okay? But look at this. I mean, I had a young man, an older man, who I said, he said he don't even want to go into Baltimore. But I said, have you gone into Baltimore and seen really what's happening in Baltimore? He said, oh, no, I haven't. Well, then shut your mouth. I had to tell him, shut your mouth. Stop speaking evil or negative if you haven't been in there trying to make a difference. You see, God sent us there, and some of the most beautiful things, I mean, it's amazing how much beauty of God will show up in the place that people have written off. Yes, God may have written off your territory. God may have written you off from the neighborhood. God may have written off your house. I mean, the world may have written off your house, but God says, if people would just peer into what I have right here. If you would be beautiful like I've made you to be, you will transform people in the desert. The place where God built his sanctuary was in the middle of nowhere. God didn't go to the big, you know, uh, the pyramids of Egypt. You go and say, I'm going to build my sanctuary right next to that, and I'm going to show that mine's going to be bigger and better than that. God didn't do that. He said, I'm going to go to a place that's totally deserted, a wilderness. There's nothing there. There's nothing really of any significance in that area. That's what he says. That's why I'm dropping all my glory. So build my pattern right there. So don't get concerned. Like Even my, my own heart sometimes gets concerned about where are all the people at. But God says, as you continue to share my glory, to release what I place in you, 
that use your mind as a paintbrush and you dip yourself in me and you start spreading myself all through your environment, I will continue to make everywhere you step a place of beauty. Amen? Amen? Amen. That's what we want today. It goes down to my next point, Psalm 34 and verse 1. Let's look at this. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall what? Continue. Be what? Continually in my mouth. Not sometimes, but continually. My soul makes it boast in the Lord. The humble, the downtrodden, will hear it and rejoice. In verse 3, Oh, magnify the Lord with me, and let us lift his name together. In verse 4, it says, I sought the Lord on the authority of his word. He answered me and delivered me from what? Every single fear. And let me go to the next verse, verse 5. It says that they look to him, look, they look to him, and were radiant. Their faces will never blush in shame or confusion. You can come in, in shame or confusion. Praise Jesus. They never, you can praise God for you. Come on in, sister, praise the Lord. Hey, Amen. The Lord says, that you must bless and magnify him at all times. And when you bless him you, what, and magnify him, it causes God to grow. It causes God to grow. It causes God to grow. And even in the Hebrew definition, magnify means go, it means gadal, which means 